Are summer knits worth it? Today I'm asking that question and going through all of my past spring and summer knits to rate each item as to whether or not it was worth knitting. Hi guys, welcome to or welcome back to my channel, Knee Knits. My name is Amy and here we talk about all things knitting. And like I mentioned in the intro, we're asking the question if summer knits are worth it. So the weather's getting warmer here in New England, spring is in the air, and kind of a funny thing happened the other week. I have some friends that follow along my knitting Instagram, even though they don't knit and they are always very up to date and intrigued with my projects. And now that spring is here, they were asking if I'm gonna continue knitting into the spring and summer because to a non-knitter, I feel like knitting doesn't really make sense for spring and summer. But if you are a knitter, you do know that there is a wide variety of warm weather projects out there. So I've been knitting garments for about two years now. So I have two summers of projects under my belt and I find that the summer and spring warm weather projects that I've made are often my least reached for items in my knit wardrobe. Sometimes I find them not wearable and I'm asking the question whether or not they were worth knitting at all. So I wanted to do a video going through each item that I have knit over the past two summers and really analyzing if the project was worth it, if the yarn was a good choice, if the project was a good choice to knit, if the pattern works for warm weather. So we're going to be doing that today. So the question of whether or not a knitting project is worth it is has a different answer for everybody. So maybe just a disclaimer that this video, as with all of my videos, they're all my own opinions based on my own experiences. Um, so I'm just sharing my experience as a knitter. Uh, maybe just for reference, I do live in Massachusetts where our summer do get hot but they are short so because knitting projects do take a long time often I find that the time period that we have to wear them is sometimes makes it not worth it because the summer goes by too quickly and by the time you finish a project it's already into fall to me I enjoy wearing my knits and I really feel like I get the most out of a knit project if I actually wear the garment semi regularly or regularly so that's how I view whether or not something was worth it you may not think that wearing your knits make them worth it or not. A lot of you guys might be process knitters where you just want to experience the knitting and the process of making something and whether or not you wear it might not be that important to you. So if that's the case, what I'm saying today might not be the most applicable, but if you are interested in learning a lot about what makes an item wearable in the summer, specifically knits, then stick around. So I have three t-shirts and three tank tops to share with you guys today. I feel like this video is going to be a part one and I'll probably do a part two a year from now after I have a third summer of knitting under my belt to sort of share my reflections because I feel like my first two years definitely were learning trying different things you know I didn't really know a whole lot about gauge and fiber and like everyone else learning along the way and I feel like this upcoming summer I'm using what I've learned from these garments to really carefully pick out what I'll be knitting and so after the end of this summer so for next year I'll have an even better idea of what summer knits are actually worth knitting to me. So without further ado, let's get into the projects. So my first project here is the Tulip Sweater Tee. This is a pattern by Bluebird Pine Shop. I knit this two summers ago. I actually test knit this for her and it was a really fun project. It was one of my first raglans, not my very first, but in my early stages of knitting garments. And let's just give you some stats on the pattern. I will be looking at my notes for this just cause a lot of numbers and stats that I can't really memorize. But the Tulip Sweater Tee is a worsted weight pattern, so you knit it on five millimeter needles. The suggested yarn is We Are Knitters, the Baby Alpaca. It's a top down raglan. You start by knitting flat and then you join in the round at the neckline. It comes in eight sizes with a finished bust circumference of 34 to 57 inches, which is 86 to 145 centimeters. And the suggested positive ease is two to four inches, five to 10 centimeters. So I knit this tulip sweater tee in the suggested yarn. So this is We Are Knitters, the baby alpaca. I use the color pearl. I don't remember how much yarn I actually use. I feel like it was around like three to four balls of the baby alpaca. 
and I really enjoyed knitting with it. It's super soft and on the five millimeter needles, it gives a very drapey fabric that definitely comes from the alpaca. By the way, that yarn is a 100% alpaca yarn. The fit overall is boxy and cropped and it has very short sleeves. Like I think as soon as you pick up for the sleeves, you go straight into the ribbing for the sleeve cuff. The embroidery is added at the end and there are great picture tutorials in the pattern on how to do the little tulip embroidery. For me, I have never done major embroidery before, so with that lack of experience, I thought that the pattern did a really good job of showing you how to do it. And I think it is really cute for the spring, obviously with the tulips in bloom, what more fun can you have than wearing a tulip themed knit t-shirt? So I will be going through some pros and cons of each project. I'll start with the pros, the good stuff. Pros is that it's really cute. I find this shirt to be very flattering. I like the boxy fit and I think it pairs very well with the cropped length. The very short ribbing details like around the cuff and the neckline I think are perfect for warm weather. You can see that the neckline is very wide. So it's like not very close to the neck but it's pretty open, which again I think lends nicely to warmer weather. It's not folded so this is all just single one by one rib. Um, again, you don't have that much bulk around your arms and your neck. And like I said before, it has a lot of drape, which I think helps, you know, lets like a breeze in when you're wearing it if it's warm and it just doesn't really cling to the skin. It sort of, you know, flows, which is really nice. Now some cons about this project. I really don't wear it very often and that is mostly due to the yarn choice. This is 100% alpaca, which is a very warm and thick fabric. So in the springtime, I really don't wanna be wearing something that's this like warm, but without sleeves. Like for me, my arms and my hands will get cold first. So if I wanna wear something warm, I'm not gonna grab something that has short sleeves. I'm gonna grab something with long Long sleeves so I feel like the past two springs have come and gone and I just really haven't reached for it despite being in that sort of transitional cool sometimes kind of warm weather just because of the thick fabric with the short sleeves I feel like those two just don't mix very well now although this is the suggested yarn for the pattern the pattern designer does note in the introduction to the pattern that if you want to make a more summery tea to use a cotton or linen blend which I think is a really good suggestion so it's up to you if you would want to knit this in an alpaca maybe if your arms don't get cold as easily this might be an okay shirt for you to wear, but because I really don't wear it, I'm gonna say that this project was not worth it. I just never reach for it despite it being really cute. I would love to re-knit it. And like I said before, I really don't think it's a pattern thing. The pattern is very well written, easy to follow, really cute final result, but the fabric and yarn choice just didn't cut it for the spring for me. All right, the next project that I will talk about is the Aosta Kami by the Knit Pearl Girl. I also test knitted this about two years ago and I knit this with Barocco Pima 100 in the color Wisteria. It is a really cute triangle tank top. It, I think it's symmetrical. I actually can't remember if like the back is bigger than the front, um, but let me read some stats about this tank. So it's a DK weight top down tank. You start by knitting those four triangles flat and then you join in the round. Uh, the suggested needle size is five millimeters. It comes in 13 sizes ranging from 80 to 145 centimeters. So very wide size range. The suggested ease is two to four inches or five to 10 centimeters of negative ease. So it's supposed to be more of a snugger fitting tank top. So the recommended yarn for the Aosta Kami is We Are Knitters, the cotton, which is a 100% Pima cotton. The Barocco Pima 100 that I used to knit this is a pretty good and cheaper alternative. It is also 100% Pima cotton. I believe this is a little bit thinner than the We Are Knitters cotton, but I was able to get sort of the same gauge on the five millimeter needles for this tank top. The Knit Pearl Girl also suggests that you can use knitting for olive pure silk held double to knit this tank. 
So let's talk about the pros about this tank. So even though it is 100% cotton, which can be very heavy, I find that this Pima 100 knit up really nicely. Even though it's sort of a DK weight or light worsted weight yarn, I find that the fabric is pretty wearable and not too thick. I think this would probably be like the thickest fabric that I would want in a knit piece for the summer. If it was any thicker, I think it would be a little bit too much in terms of like not being that breathable and heavy on my body and just feeling too warm. The Pima 100 and the We Are Knitters, the cotton, they're both machine washable on cold, which is great for those sweaty days if you need to wash your tank top frequently. Um, obviously, I really enjoy the actual look of the tank top, like the Andalusian stitch creates a beautiful fabric, pretty classic and timeless. So my favorite part about this tank top design are the adjustable straps. So I actually undid one of these straps here just to show you guys that when you're knitting it it's just two i cords that you knit and don't connect and it allows you to tie the straps wherever you need them to be you make them long enough so they can be tied into a cute bow and i haven't had any issues with them coming undone i feel like with the cotton it's pretty easy to like stretch it so it really tightens down onto that knot and I really like the adjustable straps because one of the major problems that a lot of people have with summer knits made out of cotton or silk or any sort of plant-based fiber is them stretching out because they don't have memory like animal fibers do. So these tie straps really allow you to get the best fit that you want with the strap length. And if they do stretch out over time, you can just untie them and retie them to get your perfect fit. Now, in terms of cons about this tank top, I don't wear it a whole lot but it has nothing to do with the pattern and nothing to do with the yarn I think I just knit it too small actually maybe it does have to do with the pattern because the pattern does suggest two to four inches of negative ease so this tank top is very form-fitting to my chest and my waist and torso and to me that's just not like the look that I'm going for again if that's something that you desire in a tank top more of that form-fitting fit obviously go for the negative ease but if i were to re-knit this to make it more wearable i would just go up a size or two just to get maybe zero inches of ease or like one to two inches of positive ease just to give it more of like a drapey flowy tank top feel instead of a form-fitting kind of camisole feel but other than that this pattern is great. I don't find that the triangles are like too deep. It doesn't create too deep of a v-neck. Um, me personally, I just don't enjoy having like a lot of skin exposed. So very deep v-necks, I'm usually not a fan of. Um, but this I find to be very wearable and modest and in my desired range of what I feel like showing in the summer. So is the Aesta cami worth it? Yes, I'd say it is. I really like this. I would love to knit another one. So maybe I'll put it in my queue for this upcoming summer. I think knit in the neutral color here. It's very wearable in any outfit, but would be super cute in some sort of bright summery color as well. So definitely worth it, both the pattern and the yarn choice. Next up, we have the Anchor Summer Shirt by Petite Knit. The Anchor Summer Shirt is one of the many anchors patterns that Petite Knit has. It has this ribbed circular yoke motif. And let's just talk about the pattern for a few moments. So the Anchor Summer Shirt is a DK weight top-down circular yoke tee. It comes in nine sizes, ranging from 80 centimeters to 150 centimeters. The recommended yarn is Sanis Garn Lean, which is a summer worsted weight yarn. And the suggested ease is zero to two inches of positive ease. That's about zero to five centimeters. So this was the last summer knit that I made two summers ago, so two years ago. And I knit this in the size extra small, and I used the suggested yarn. I used Sanis Garn Lean, which is a cotton linen and viscose blend. Now, lean is a very nice summer yarn. I think that's probably my favorite part about this whole project is the yarn. So I'll just show you the fabric up close. You can definitely see it in my hand being very drapey. This is the color light pink. And because of the fiber blend, there is some natural variegation in all of their colors. So you can see that there's sort of like a whiter strand and a more pink strand. And I think that creates just a really subtly textured fabric that just makes 
the color pop even more than if it was just like a flat solid color. I really liked knitting with it. I didn't really have any like major issues with splitting or like roughness on my hands. I don't know, I had a very pleasant knitting experience. I knit this on four and a half millimeter metal needles. I also find that the fabric is very like cooling to the touch, like just feeling it in my hand right now. It feels very cool and I definitely feel the same sort of coolness when I'm wearing it on my body as well. This yarn can also be machine washed on cold, which is again a pro for the summer. And I've worn this a lot. I think this is probably my most worn summer knit. I find it very easy to style. I really liked the ribbed yoke. I think it just adds enough texture where if you're looking for that sort of like plain t-shirt and jeans look, but want to make it just a little bit more exciting, this t-shirt is a great go-to. This was my first circular yoke pattern and it's a pretty beginner friendly. There are no short row shaping, which I might say is like a con because it does do that thing where it sort of rides up at the front and rides down at the back just a little bit, but not enough to make me not want to wear it. I did add some thin elastic at the neckline, which was suggested in the pattern. I don't know if you guys can see it there. It's just a very thin white elastic strand, and I think that will help with the neckline to stay in place over time. This yarn is definitely going to stretch and grow. I think it already has. So I did mention before that I knit an extra small and with petite knit patterns, I normally fit well in a small. So the fact that this fits me well and is a size smaller than I should be knitting tells me that it probably stretched enough for me to um, feel comfortable in it and it didn't feel too small despite being a smaller size. Some cons of this t-shirt, I have been seeing some stretching of the sleeve cuff here. So it kind of does like flare out a little bit. I think I might consider adding some elastic just to help cinch that in and prevent that sort of sleeve flare. Now also in terms of the yarn weight, I did mention that this is a worsted weight yarn and I said before that with cotton, I feel like DK is maybe the maximum weight that I would go and any heavier would be too thick. However, because this is cotton blended with linen, I feel like it, even though it's worsted, it's still light enough where I enjoy wearing it in the spring and in the late summer going into fall. However, I cannot wear this in like the middle of summer. It's definitely very thick and because it's sort of like a, it's kind of close fitting around the underarm, like right here. That's like a lot of thick fabric right at the underarm where in the warmer months, I just would not enjoy wearing this. So although I find myself reaching for this shirt a lot in the spring and a lot in the late summer, I really don't wear this in the midst of summer. It's just too thick and heavy to wear, although it is very cute. So I would say that this project is worth it. Knowing that I really like the fabric that Stannis Garn Lean makes. I have also heard that they have a fingering weight lean, which is a, it's called Tin Lean. Um, and I would love to try knitting with that for a summer project, knowing that if this is really cool to the touch and comfortable to wear and flexible, I can only imagine what the fingering weight version would feel like. I'm sure it's great. If you've worked with it, let me know in the comments. I'm curious if you've had positive experiences with it. All right, now we're getting into my second summer of knitting garments. So one of the first projects that I made last summer was the Streamline Tank. This is a free pattern by Two of Wands. This is a DK weight tank top. It has beautiful like half fisherman's rib details at the neckline and the sides as well as the shoulders. And let's just talk about some of the stats of this pattern. So Streamline Tank. The suggested yarn is Lion Brand Kobu. It's DK weight, suggested needle size is four and a half millimeters. Now it is knit bottom up flat. So you knit both panels, the front and the back flat, and then you seam them all together. Both panels are the same. So it's completely symmetrical, both the front and the back. It comes in eight sizes, finished busts from 33 inches to 61 inches, and that's 84 to 155 centimeters. The suggested ease is four inches of positive ease. That's about 10 centimeters. So spoiler alert, I think this tank top is worth it because I wear this all the time. I wore this so much last summer. I, this is my most worn tank top summer knit and let's talk about why. So I did knit this in the suggested yarn, which is Lion Brand Kobu. Kobu is a very affordable 50% cotton, 50% bamboo DK weight yarn. I just knit it in the color white. 
and I just love the fabric that it made. It is so drapey and cool to the touch, probably even more so than the Saint Escarn lean. And I think it really shows these like half fisherman's rib details like beautifully. They look so nice. I find that the pattern itself is very flattering and not to also forget that this tank top is super bra friendly. You have these really thick straps that, at least for me, they cover up my bra straps perfectly fine so I can wear a normal bra under this. The underarm is not too deep where it shows like the side of the bra band either. So I feel like this is really easy for me to throw on with a pair of shorts or a pair of jeans. Also the fact that I knit it in the color white, it just makes it really easy to style. Now another pro of this tank is that it is seamed, which I know might be a hot take because a lot of people don't like seaming, but because cotton and other summer fibers are prone to stretch out with wear, I think that having a seamed piece really helps with that. So you have like this whole side seam here, which is gonna prevent it from growing lengthwise. The straps are also seamed, which you can see here, and it really helps the stretch. <laughs> it really helps the straps from stretching out too much. And also on top of that, the straps are knit in this half fisherman's rib where you knit into the row below, and that creates these sort of slipped stitches that add a lot of structural integrity. Like you can see pulling on this, there is not a lot of give, which I think is very helpful for a knit tank top because I find that the biggest issue I have with tanks are that the straps will stretch out really quickly. So I wore this a lot last summer. I didn't count how many times I wore it, but I found it very wearable and I've seen very minimal pilling, very minimal stretching, and it's just very comfy to wear. Now some cons about this tank top. I don't have a lot, but I will say it's knit with line brand Kobu, which I have heard people in the knitting community have a vendetta against this yarn. I think it's just cause it's splitty. Now when I was knitting with it, I didn't really have any issues with splitting. I don't know, that was just my experience. So I really enjoyed the yarn. I think you add that to the low cost and the fact that it's just very comfortable to wear. I mean, I would recommend Kobu, but I think if you ask a lot of other knitters, they would would not recommend it. So take that with a grain of salt, maybe look at reviews yourself and or feel it at the yarn store. I think it's sold in most like big box craft stores in person so you can decide if you want to use it or not. Um, but you can definitely sub in any sort of DK weight summer fiber. I would suggest something with the same amount of drape. Like this is half bamboo and bamboo is very drapey. So if you can find an equivalent uh, DK weight yarn, then I think you would be in good hands for this project. Other cons, it is knit bottom up flat, usually not people's preferred method of knitting garments. I followed the pattern exactly in terms of like length from the bottom to where you like knit for the upper part and I found it a little too cropped. Like if I were to knit this again, I would knit it longer. It was just hard for me to tell how long it was going to be when knit bottom up. Also, if you don't like seaming, this might not be the most exciting project to you because you do have to seam. However, because it's a tank top, not a lot of seaming. Like these side panels are pretty short and the sleeves are pretty short. So not a lot of seaming, but there is seaming. So was this streamlined tank worth it? Yes, it was. I'm excited to wear this again this upcoming summer. Next we have Camisole number no. four by My Favorite Things Knitwear. I think this was the camisole of the summer last summer. I definitely fell into the trendy trap of knitting a pattern because everyone else was, which I don't think is necessarily a bad thing. I'm not saying that it is, but if you're only knitting something because everyone else is knitting it, then maybe it's not gonna be your most wearable project. So this is camisole number no. four. I knit this in Knitting for Olive Pure Silk in the color Olive. It is a top-down triangle tank top with I-cord spaghetti straps in a really nice broken rib texture. Some pattern stats. Its suggested needle size is three and a half millimeter. The suggested yarn is Knitting for Olive Pure Silk. And so it's a fingering weight pattern. It's knit top-down flat and then you join into the round. It comes in only six sizes from 80 to 120 centimeters, which is about 31 and a half to 47 and a quarter inches. The suggested ease is negative ease of two to five centimeters, which is about 
three quarters to two inches of negative ease. I knit this in the smallest size, so this is an extra small, and I have mentioned what size I knit all of my garments in, but if you want my measurements for reference, those will be down below in the description box. So I only used about two balls of the pure silk for this. The other suggested yarn for the pattern is Knitting for Olive Cotton Merino or Knitting for Olive Merino. Any sort of fingering weight yarn or light fingering weight that meets gauge could work for this pattern. So some pros about this pattern, it's very flattering. I feel like it's a very flattering silhouette. The fabric texture or the pattern texture, I mean, is very pretty. Like you can see this broken rib is really stunning. I think that that chest detail where you have sort of like this vertical line that goes down and you have the ribbing that comes out of it on each side like it's a gorgeous piece of design work. I'll just show you the back. It has smaller triangles in the back, which I think is a little bit more like exciting than just sort of a straight across back. The fabric is really drapey, really nice to wear in the summer. You can see me holding it up like this. Definitely a lot of drape. The Knitting for Olive Pure Silk has a really nice color selection. And it's also, I feel like, pretty affordable. It's not affordable as cotton, but compared to, you know, a whole merino and mohair sweater that you might knit in the winter, all of these summer pieces are definitely going to be cheaper to make. So those are some pros of the pattern. Let's get into some cons. Now, I don't really find this pattern to be very wearable. I did mention before that I don't really like having a lot exposed or a lot of skin exposed. So for me, I feel like this tank has a very deep V. It has like a pretty like low back. So I just don't feel extremely comfortable wearing it. And on top of it, it's not really bra friendly. I find that like the underarm shows some of the bra and these straps are definitely too thin to sort of like hide any bra straps. So not very bra friendly for me to wear. Another con is that these straps stretch out really quickly. In fact, they're probably stretching as I'm like holding them up like this with my thumbs. Just the weight of the tank top puts a lot of pressure on these really thin eye cord straps. And although the pattern does warn about the stretching, I still knit the straps maybe shorter than I wanted them, knowing that they would stretch. But after just wearing this tank top for like one day, they stretched out immensely and the stretching of the straps brings the v-neck lower, it brings the back lower. And I really only wore this like twice before it became unwearable. So that's kind of unfortunate. Like I would say it fit me on the first try on, but then after that, it was just way too stretched out at the straps. Now that's not too difficult of a fix. All I have to do is sort of cut off where they're attached, frog some of the stitches and then reattach it. But I don't know, I'm wondering if that'll help again for, maybe it'll be good for two days, but then after that, will I have to re-shorten them again? Like, I don't know, it just doesn't seem too, enticing to have to repair my tank top after every season of wearing it. This pattern also took a really long time to knit with the broken rib combined with the fingering weight. It can be pretty tedious. I think some people say it's more tedious than others. Like, I think I had fun knitting this. I didn't find that it was too much of a slog, but if you're not a fan of ribbing, then you are definitely not really gonna enjoy this pattern because it's a lot of knits and purls all in every row. Now, I guess if I did want to make this more wearable, I could consider like cutting the eye cord straps and making them like the Aosta cami where they're sort of bow tied at the top. So if I were to like cut this somehow and I do have extra yarn to sort of re-knit the eye cord straps really long and then make them tieable, that would help with the stretching. But again, I just don't know if it's worth it because I still don't really like how deep the v-neck is and that's totally a personal preference. If you enjoy wearing v-necks, you might really like this tank top, but for me, I just found that this was not worth it. Now, I, I didn't find that was worth it. I wouldn't knit it again, but I do really like the style. I do really like the broken rib. So I was looking at an alternative pattern. My Favorite Things Knitwear also has camisole number seven, which has a similar sort of broken rib vibe. And it's still a v-neck, but the v-neck doesn't look as deep and it has thicker straps. Like it doesn't have spaghetti straps. It's sort of just like a classic tank where the v-neck sort of comes up and the tank straps are, they're not super wide, but they're wider than spaghetti straps so I would consider making that she also suggests a fingering weight yarn so it would be a good candidate for the pure silk or a sort of cotton merino unfortunately that tank top also has the same limited size range that this camisole has it only goes up to a double XL so just putting that in as a disclaimer for that pattern recommendation 
The last pattern I will be rating today is my Riley T. The Riley T is a t-shirt pattern by Rachel Kurihara, and let's go over the pattern stats. So this is the DK weight boxy tee. It's knit top down with drop shoulder details and it has this really nice sort of ribbing that goes across the shoulder and down the sleeve. There are two sleeve options for a longer short sleeve or more of a shorter cap sleeve. And it comes in nine sizes, finished bust circumferences from 33 to 65 inches. That's 84 to 165 centimeters. The suggested positive ease is three to five inches or about seven and a half to 12.7 centimeters. So I knit this Riley T last summer. I believe it took me into last fall as well in Lion Brand Comfy Cotton Blend. I knit this on four and a half millimeter needles. I think the suggested needle size is four and a half millimeter needles. The suggested yarn is a DK weight merino yarn, but I use the Comfy Cotton Blend, which is a 50% cotton, 50% polyester yarn. Now, some pros of this pattern. It's super cute. Like the pattern photos, like even my photos, like I feel like it's a really cute tee if you're into that boxy cropped look. You don't have to make it cropped. I knit mine maybe like three inches longer than the suggested pattern length. I love the details on this pattern. It has folded collars and folded like hems with the pearl bump that I think looks so classy. And you can also see that at the bottom here. And if you knit this in sort of like a hand dyed merino, I think the uh, solid stockinette shows off the sort of tonalities of the yarn really well. I didn't use a hand dyed yarn, but this Lion Brand Comfy Cotton Blend does take dye differently. It's half and half. So half of the yarn is a little bit lighter than the other half, which sort of creates kind of that like tonal variegated look and texture. I think this is a really fun take on a classic drop shoulder t-shirt, especially with this ribbing at the sleeves and the shoulder. Really clever design about how that continues. I also thought the pattern was super well designed and thought out. There's a lot of intentional short row shaping just all over the place to make it really well fitting, um, but still give kind of an effortless look. Let's get into cons of my specific project. Now, I feel like all of my cons revolve around the yarn choice. So I picked Lion Brand Comfy Cotton Blend because I had the word cotton in it. So I was like, oh, this will be perfect for a t-shirt. Now, the thing about cotton, it's really heavy and this yarn is really heavy and I really don't wear this shirt that much because the yarn is very thick. You can see that it doesn't really have a lot of drape doesn't really have a lot of flow. It feels pretty stiff and the fabric itself is just, it's just very thick to wear. So kind of like what I said before with the alpaca t-shirt where like my arms and hands will get cold first. So it's just like, I don't know if I want something this thick, I'm not gonna put on a t-shirt, I'm gonna put on a long sleeve. I also picked this yarn because it was meeting gauge, but I was mostly thinking about gauge in terms of stitch count and row count in the specified like four by four inches, but I wasn't really thinking about density, which is something that I've learned since making this project. So I mentioned that this yarn is really heavy. So I actually looked at how much yardage I use in this project and it weighs about 380 grams, which is pretty heavy. I knit this in the size small and it's 380 grams, which is pretty heavy. In comparison, I was just looking up the weights of some of my wool sweaters that I knit over the winter and my Monday sweater, which is a wool and mohair long sleeve sort of boxy fit sweater is about the same weight. So you have all that weight in a cropped t-shirt, all compressed. So it's very dense, very thick, not very comfortable to wear. And that's just something to keep in mind with cotton, especially, I mean, this is 50-50 cotton polyester. So I don't think the polyester helped with the weight or the breathability of this fabric. So because of the heaviness of the yarn and in combination with these folded necklines, it's just too, stuffy for me to wear in the spring and the summer. So I'm gonna say that this project was not worth it. And thinking about the pattern and how it suggests a DK weight wool, I'm still not sure if I would want to wear a 100% wool t-shirt in the spring and summer. I just also feel like that would be, although lighter, it would be too like 
thick and warm for me to wear and feel breathable, I would consider making this project again. So if I were to knit this t-shirt again, I would probably look for a merino silk blend or some sort of like cotton merino blend. It, again, it is DK, which is heavy. Maybe the Sanus Garn Lean would look really nice in this. Um, but yeah, nothing against the pattern. It's a beautifully written pattern. I really like the final look just in terms of wearability. I just don't find it very wearable just because it's so heavy. So that's everything that I have knit over the past two summers and whether or not they were worth it or not in my eyes. Now, I am still learning every day with everything that I knit, I'm learning something new. So this is not like the final end all be all to summer knits. Although I definitely find that my winter knits are more wearable, I still want to experiment with with warm weather knits. I have a couple patterns in the queue and projects on the needles for this season that I wanna try out with different fibers. You know, more fingering weights, more cotton blends, more silk blends, trying some different styles. I know what I like and what I don't like from all of those projects that I just shared with you. Like for example, I'm staying away from spaghetti straps, staying away from heavy like worsted or DK weight cottons and leaning more towards finger fingering weight cottons and linens or some sort of like silk blends that might give a more breathable lighter fabric in the projects. I've learned that fiber choice is just as important as pattern choice. You can see here a lot of the problems that I had with all of these knits were not the patterns at all. It was more of the yarn choice and the fiber choice that I had made in knitting them. So with this third summer coming up and being a lot more cognizant of fiber and I am looking forward to seeing how my next summer knits turn out. We'll probably try and refilm this again next year to see if I have made any more conclusions about what I like, what I don't like, and what is worth it or not worth it to knit for the summer. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, maybe gave you some insight into summer knitting. Let me know your thoughts below on what summer knits you have found worth it and what summer knits you have found not worth it in terms of wearability. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And if you like my content, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I try to come out with videos once a week all about knitting and other fiber crafts. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time.